We'll now take a look at the South Converse unit, or Hunt Area 65, in the state of Wyoming, where we have a long-term CWD project underway in cooperation with Wyoming Game and Fish Department and the University of Wyoming. The majority of the funding for this study was provided by the United States Geological Survey. Wasting disease, or we call it CWD, um, is a disease of the deer family. It's an insidious, uh, progressive, slowly spreading disease that really there's not a lot we can do except studies like this. This particular deer herd has the highest prevalence of chronic wasting disease measured in any wild deer herd on the planet. In the last 10 years, this mule deer population has um, literally been cut in half. One out of every two deer out here conceivably could have CWD. Why this area has such a higher prevalence than others, just not sure. Stay quiet, report injuries. When we release deer, don't really don't stand in front of them. I'm a PhD student at the University of Wyoming. Is that new animal a doe or buck? So the title of this project is The Epidemiology of Chronic Wasting Disease in Mule Deer in the Endemic Area of Wyoming. We don't want to release deer that have lacerations or anything. If you think it's abnormal, just tell us. What was this last pulse before that? Oh, I mean, All right, 27. Yes. Look for 27. Look for 27. I am the principal investigator, so I'm the lead scientist on this project. And uh, I advise Malia, who's the graduate student doing the work out here on the field. She's working on her PhD. We would like you to spend just a little more time looking for deer number 2727. I'm the wildlife management coordinator for the Casper region for the Wyoming Game Fish Department. Every single year, the prevalence of chronic wasting disease in, in hunter harvested deer has increased. So given just the dramatic population decline that we're seeing, kind of wanted to, to examine the effects of chronic wasting disease. CWD tends to do two things in a population. It spreads geographically and it grows in prevalence. There is no innate immunity among populations. So while it is a very slow moving disease, there are no effective tools at this point in time to manage the disease. The CWD progresses in an animal. It essentially, um, it, it basically pokes holes in their brain, it turns the brain into kind of like a sponge. And so motor skills um, deteriorate, behavioral changes. The deer become Oh, lethargic and depressed and unaware of their surroundings. There's no, and uh, that one has been too close to her mouth and house. These deer look like they're wasting away. They're, they're very skinny. You can pretty much see every rib in their body. And eventually they'll die of emaciation, hence the name chronic wasting disease. The United States Geological Survey has been studying chronic wasting disease for the past decade. Our current study in Wyoming may in fact be the most important research study that we have been able to fund. The results of this study will be very important to determine how management moves forward. CWD is, is endemic to this part of Wyoming, um, southeastern Wyoming and northern Colorado. It's been here for a long time, probably more than 40 years, and it's spreading geographically. It's a disease similar to, but not the same as what people call mad cow disease. White-tailed deer are susceptible, mule deer are susceptible, elk are susceptible, and we've even found it in moose. What we're doing here in this study is we're trying to determine the effects of chronic wasting disease or CWD on mule deer populations and in particular this mule deer population in Wyoming. You know, are, are they going to spiral down and eventually, you know, get into serious trouble or not? We call this whole thing the Laprelle Valley and we chose this particular study area because this serves as a winter range for a substantial number of the deer in this herd unit. So it's, it's where we can capture on, you know, the, the highest density of deer in a little area and it's a pretty representative 
uh, portion of the herd. In the South Converse unit, prevalence has increased from approximately 15 percent to 50 percent over the course of the last decade. The population has seen approximately a 50 percent decline from some 14,000 to less than 7,000 deer in this herd unit. This is our third year of the project and uh, this is our third capture. So what we're doing is we're retesting deer that we've already captured and seeing if they have the disease. And then we're also capturing some new deer to see if they test positive for CWD. Now we have 50 does and 10 bucks collared. And so that's what we're shooting for here when we, when we leave here this weekend. The funding from this project has largely come from the United States Geological Survey, or USGS. We've also gotten research from the Mule Deer Foundation for this work, and from the Wyoming Game and Fish Department, and from the University of Wyoming. We hire this helicopter crew, and they go out, and it's usually a three-person team. and they fly them to us at this staging area where we can do all our testing and radio collaring. A lot of deer. <laughs> Once they drop off a deer, we mobilize them. It's a tranquilizer and an anesthetic. We also take a sample of blood and we use that for genotyping as well as pregnancy testing. We also collect uh, what is known as a tonsillar biopsy, a small sample of tissue from the tonsils of these deer that we can test for chronic wasting disease. Probably the most effective live test that there is for CWD in deer, but as you can see, it's pretty hard to apply across a free-ranging population. After we're done doing the biopsy, we also, at that time, radio collar them, so each one of them gets a unique frequency, something we can tune into their specific radio station. They have a special mortality sensor, so if that deer doesn't move for four hours, and we can hear that and we can go and investigate and see what happened. Yeah, we put these dog tags on the collars, so if a hunter um, harvests the deer, they've got a number here that they can call so that Malia or Todd can uh, retrieve the collar to uh, get that data off of it. In free-ranging deer populations with chronic wasting disease, we tend to see higher prevalence in adults than in young deer and in males as opposed to females. This is presumably due to behavioral differences amongst deer. Males tend to, to form into bachelor groups in the summertime where they have lots of physical contact with one another. Later on in the fall, they greatly expand their home range during the breeding season and interact with multiple females in the herd, thereby potentially increasing their chances of becoming infected. So we get a cocktail of drugs that knocks them down, and then we reverse those drugs with these reversal agents when we're done with all of our procedures over there. Let's give him a little room. If he decides to do something stupid, that's your shield. Everybody else stand back here. And as you saw, they get up and, and run away pretty happy. This is our north site. We'll move down to the south tomorrow. So far, we've captured 34 of them. That's a really good day. Some of them were new deer. Some of them were old uh, recaptures, which is good. And for the most part, the deer are coming in healthy. No injuries from a human side point, which is the number one concern. Today was definitely a success. It was a really good day. In Wyoming, a group of scientists, grad students, and DNR agents continue their CWD study on a mule deer herd in the South Converse region, a herd with the highest prevalence of chronic waste and disease in the entire world. So we've had a really good two days. I think it went really well. The deer captures were very successful. What our preliminary data is showing is that mountain lion predation and chronic wasting disease are the two biggest pressures on this deer population right now. So far we've gotten about 30% of our does that come back positive for the disease. We radio collared 10 bucks last year and half of those came back positive. And we get asked how much is CWD going to spread and is it going to wipe out deer and elk populations? We're just really not sure. 
prior to the year 2000, CWD had only been documented in a handful of counties in southeastern Wyoming and adjacent Colorado. After 2002, when CWD was detected in the state of Wisconsin, surveillance efforts increased across all 50 states. In that subsequent 12 years, we have now detected CWD in 21 states, either in captive facilities, free-ranging populations, or a combination. CWD is still spreading geographically and growing in prevalence locally, but we've done a vastly better job of identifying where it is on the landscape. Since the time this footage was shot, CWD has been detected in two additional states, in free-ranging mule deer in far west Texas and in a captive white-tailed deer facility in the state of Iowa. I think the average person can do a couple of things, have patience, let us finish some of these research projects that are on the ground right now. Talk to and work with your game management agencies. There are situations like this where there may need to be a decline in the number of mule deer tags that hunters can get. If we want a sustainable deer population that's healthy, sometimes we're going to have to cut back in things like the number of tags in an area like this, and, and that's already happened with this mule deer herd. We've scaled back hunting seasons to extremely conservative buck-only seasons. We haven't harvested does for quite a while, and, and this herd's just decreased at such a precipitous rate that we're, we're very, very concerned. In the South Converse unit of Wyoming, where prevalence has exceeded 50% in adult males, one of the ramifications we are now witnessing is a shortage of mature trophy-type animals. CWD can and will, at high prevalence, change the demographic structure of deer herds. Well, we get a lot of questions from hunters on how safe it is to consume CWD infected deer. There is no evidence to date that shows that chronic wasting disease is a direct threat to human health. The Centers for Disease Control demonstrated absolutely positively that humans can either get CWD or cannot get CWD, so it's still unknown. Having said that, whatever human risk there is, is extremely minute. If hunters are interested in having their deer or elk tested for CWD, they need to contact the state natural resource agency in the state where they're hunting. Nearly every state can accommodate or help hunters identify how to get their deer tested for chronic wasting disease. There is no cure still. There's no treatment for it still. There are actually people starting to think that maybe someday there'll be something like a vaccine for it. Hopefully, these does can replace themselves in the population at a much higher rate before they eventually succumb to the disease. It's an insidious, uh, progressive, slowly spreading disease that really there's not a lot we can do except studies like this. Get more information, find out where it is, find out what it's doing to populations, and then work from there. Although these studies are in their infancy, there's great promise that one day we will have a solution for CWD that we will be able to apply in field situations and protect the integrity of our deer herds for future generations. CWD moves across the landscape in two different fashions, deer to deer to deer and human assisted. We can do very little about the deer to deer movement of disease, but the human assisted is where regulatory efforts and educational efforts can have their greatest impact. Probably the biggest risk of, of disease spreading is the inadvertent movement of infectious materials or carcasses by hunters. If you are hunting in an area where CWD is known to exist, check the rules and regulations of your home state or locale to determine what is safe to bring back home. If by chance you have killed a CWD positive animal and brought it back to your home state, you should make every effort to appropriately discard of those materials. Do not allow those materials to end up out on the landscape where healthy deer in your area could come across them and become infected with this disease. States have implemented preventative measures to try and prevent CWD from coming to their state and becoming established in free-ranging populations. These regulations are not designed directly to impact hunters or to discourage hunting or to destroy hunting. What their long-term goal is to keep disease out of that location or to reduce the impacts of disease once it becomes established. The most effective tool for CWD management where it is established in a free-ranging population may be dramatic, sustained population reduction. And this can be accomplished through hunting, 
through landowner culling, and in some circumstances through agency sharpshooting efforts. If hunters are truly interested in the long-term health of deer resources, they may have to accept short-term consequences of population reduction for the sake of disease management. One of the benefits of attempting to hold CWD in check today is that if we get better tools to deal with disease in the future, things like vaccines, the smaller the area and the fewer the number of CWD positive deer, the more likely we'll be able to be successful with advanced management tools. So you can see we did fly high in tonight's show and we got to take a behind the scenes look at what those great biologists and those DNR folks were doing out there in the great state of Wyoming. There are so many different studies that are going on, not only about CWD, but other diseases like EHD and other things that affect deer populations that we don't even know about. The science is still ongoing. Hopefully they will find a solution for this terrible disease. That's my hope at least. But if you're a deer hunter and you're a conservationist, you can't really watch the science that's present and not have some concern about this disease and how it might spread. Hopefully we've educated you just a little bit and you can draw your own conclusions from tonight's show.